The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on the 16th, Monday, the 16th of October. We're looking at the Dow up 199 at 33,872. For me, I, I think this is, even though we are short term long for a trade, uh, I think that this is more a bounce than anything else. I think we will get out of this, we'll get an H pattern. And whether or not we break, say, 33,500, where 33,872 is going to be the issue. But right now, you can see the market saying, phew, at least uh, the Middle East it seems to be a little hiatus in the tension. Uh, so uh, the, the Dow popped up to the 33,948 30, level. The whole 33,900s would normally be strong resistance. So we're going to be watching this very closely. Look, here it is again at this orange 200 period exponential, orangey pink. 200 period exponential moving average here on the left side chart, the daily chart. One, two, three, four. This is the fifth day that it's trying to get above it. Will it be able to get above it and hold? I think that's a big issue. And look, you've got the weekly chart, the nine period moving average is under the 14. That's a bit of a negative. Look at the SP. We've got the, exactly the same thing here. The SP tried to rally. Then had a, a, at the 50 period moving average right there, the little dash line, one, two, three, four sessions to try to get there. Couldn't hold it. Um, well, it got there, but it couldn't hold it. Had an ugly session on Friday, and today's trying to rally. It's kind of stuck. It's up 22. Not bad action. When it, I would have thought that today would have been quite ugly if the tension in the Middle East had held. It's, uh, it's still there. Believe me, this is not going away. And that's the reason why we look at gold in a moment. But in the meantime, 43.51, uh, up 23. Uh, it's not. It's already pretty good action. Look at the QQQ index 100. Uh, this is trading up 2.46 at 367.74. Ugly session. That is a technique that I've developed over the years. I call this the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. Why do I call it the Chapman Wave? Because it's something that I developed and have used uh, pretty successfully for a long time. What happens is there's a trend line. Trend line is a single line, a trend line. If you get two trend lines and they are parallel, it becomes a channel. There's a little mini channel right here. And that mini channel says that, look, every time the prices come into that channel, even though it's a declining channel, and how on earth does a chart know that it's a declining channel if it was horizontal, like this line of this little Fibonacci, this, um, uh, right here, Fibonacci expansion line. That's horizontal. You remember horizontal, 20, 20, 20. It keeps hitting 20. But if it goes 20, 19, 18, 17, that's amazing that it should do that. But I have a reason. I think that the reason for that is because the tide is going down and the emotional response from the low to the high gets worn out at a certain level and it just isn't quite good enough to break out from the previous high and it fails. Then it does it again. It's a little weaker response. And that's kind of the way I look at it this right, right now. So this is in a declining uh, trend in the daily chart. But the nine period moving average in the uh, QQQ index 100 has turned up. And that is a positive. The MACD is good. The stochastics actually over 80 percent at 80, 81 percent. Uh, oh, and I should also mention that we are long a little bit aggressively on a very small position. A position, we're, we're a little long, taking a little bit off uh, as a kind of a reward whenever we can. But most importantly, that on balance volume, the blue line is pulling back, and the relative strength is at about 50 percent, 53 percent. It's it's okay. It's not great. So when I look at this, I say, well, the daily chart is holding very nicely in the QQQ. The weekly chart is holding even better with that same trend line. Now it's the weekly chart, so we're looking at this trend line right here. Just tagged it and then pulled back on uh, Wednesday, I think it was uh, Thursday of last week. Now look at this. Uh, the 9 period moving average is turning down, but it hasn't crossed negative. It's still positive. That's a little green line you can see right there. Let me see on the chart. Yeah, you can just see it, barely see it. Maybe I'll go here and I'll just do this. I'll show you the blank chart right here. Right there. Open the recent workspaces. 
Let's go to the blank. There it is. Now you'll see the nine period moving average. It goes to green when it's positive, goes to pink when it's negative. And lo and behold, what do we have um, right here? Uh, that's Bitcoin. That's going nowhere at this particular point. Let's go to the QQQ. There's a weekly chart. And you can see the week. Hello, anybody on me? Yep, there it is. The weekly chart, green. It turned green right there. I think it was May, uh, February of this part, this year, February, the week of the third. Uh, 313 was a high, 289 was a low. And here it is at 368, and it's green, starting to make lower lows and lower highs in the uh, almost in the uh, price itself. The gray is the price. But here it is, slightly above the nine period moving average, which is green, and the green's just above the black 14 period moving average. And if you look at the S&P in this particular naked chart, that's all you've got, these three, this is the S&P weekly. It went pink, and now the rally is coming up, but it hasn't changed to green yet. To me, this is really important because it's, I call it the indicator of last resort, and we're going to see if this week, if it stays, if the S&P and the QQQ QQQ stays green all week, and the S&P stays pink. Uh, then we've got this bifurcation between quite important in indices. The NDX 100, of course, is more high-tech than anything else. And you've got the S&P, just general 500 stocks. And I haven't been able to put a down arrow here in the weekly, even for a sell signal, because it hasn't closed decisively underneath the 14-period moving average. Uh, it has closed twice out of the last five weeks, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Let's go to the IWM, IWM, there it is, IWM, very ugly chart, just not pretty at all. Let's go to gold, and we'll see that gold is holding steady. It's down 10, it's been down 10 for quite a while, a couple of hours now. 1930, my, my thinking here was that with the kind of move that we had on Friday, which is really an emotional response to the Middle East conflict, uh, that we would get Unless there was a real easing of the tension, we wouldn't get more than a 50%. As I said in my market overview, my uh, hour-long video over the weekend uh, for subscribers to my opening call, we're going to have to watch gold very closely because it is an emotional response. This is a response that uh, any international conflagration, you, you almost always see gold become the go-to area. And uh, then obviously gold stocks improve and silver also participates. But gold is the one that we go to. And for the international response to uncertainty, the dollar is really the dollar has been the strength for a long time. And it's showing strength right here. If you want to look at the EUR, USD, that's the euro dollar currency pair. Look and look at that sharp pullback now. Can't, unfortunately, I'm going to have to spend Good part of the day, I think, figuring out what's going on here. Look, my notations are not holding. I've had that happen before when it's just one particular chart, usually like, usually one chart, not all the different time frames. Um, this is affecting everything. And I just went to trade station. We worked on it, got rid of cookies, didn't help. I don't know, it's going to be a big deal, I can tell. But anyway, I, I, anyway if I didn't get my notations back, I am in very deep trouble. Dow's up 243, s and is up 34. We've got a lot to look at being this uh, Monday. Oh, so just a real quickly as we go into this, the GDX is holding very well. And the question was, what about it? I think it's in play. We're going to be watching closely. I'll be back in a moment. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hey right, folks, now we're going to an acceleration in the market. Dow's up 260, S&P's up 37, and the E-mini's up 38.50. Uh, this is hmm, starting a brand new move up to the top here. Let's go to, uh, oh, we've got a caller. We've got Earl in Seminole. Earl, how are you? Great, Basil. Great to talk to you. Good to talk with you. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Good. You'd like, like to, to have look you at take a, a look at the short term for GLD. Okay, so GLD, folks, this is the way. This is a one tenth the price of spot gold, and the uh, GLD trading right now down eighty seven cents at one hundred seventeen point uh, ninety seven. Let me just get rid of these fib numbers because obviously they're not in use anymore. Um, so this made a peak F in the Chapman wave in the weekly chart way back earlier this year. I think it was around about May. Let me just double check. May. Yep, May the week of May the 5th at 191.36. Spider Gold Trust trades of a tenth the price of, of uh, spot gold and um, had a fabulous move. This move now, I just want to check. I think this is leg B to the upside. 172.86. Uh, yes, this is, in fact. Now, it's funny that I've got my icons. I've got the up sign, the up arrow and the down arrow, but I can't put the, the oh, man, A, oh, it disappears. We're in leg B, and it will be a peak B if today there is no high above uh, 179.10. That was the high of Friday. And I'm going to draw in this channel line right here. This one right here. For the weekly chart, uh, basically, uh, I'd like to do it in this manner right here, just a little bit over there. Yeah, so it's got a bit of a, it's got a channel formation. I'm looking at the resistance on the. It's funny because on the very short term, and that's the daily chart and the weekly chart. I've got trend lines of resistance, and it makes it very clear what what I'm I'm. Uh, looking at right now, and that just says the nine-period exponential moving average in the daily chart went positive 
on Friday. It's positive again today. The MACDs had a huge spike in the um, nine period differential, the green line, and the pink, the, the red line, the 26 period exponential moving average, is turning up very slowly. Now, usually what you get is this is an emotional response to something. It could be earnings, anything like that. When you see this green line spike, and then what happens is the green line starts to pull back as that red line tries to work its way higher. And that's when you get a consolidation. So I'm just mentioning this just in, in each indicator because each technical tool gives you its own response to action. And if you're looking at the stochastic, very nice straight line move up to 63%, the on-balance volume is lagging and the relative strength is moving up, but it's not, it's not very strong right now. So for me, the way that the, the gold action occurred it's just so interesting. I would have expected Monday a week ago that you would have got a 40, 50 point move up, maybe had a little bit of a consolidation the next day, and then another big move up. Instead, what happened was there was a pop, then there was this big gap up, it stood still, then another gap up for two days, and it stood still, and then a gap up, and now you've got your two day rule here. And let's see what happens next in terms of just the price pattern for the GLD. But your question, I'm, I'm just going to get to the issue right now. I think your question is, is this a bigger move in GLD than just a single pop to the upside? Is that your question? Yeah, I, I, I'm just wondering uh, whether we're at the top of, of a move or, or we still got a little more room to, to, to go north. So this is the really, I spent quite some time over the weekend kind of pondering this, looking at the charts. Uh, trying to decipher um, the action in return in, in corresponding to other big spikes to the upside in gold due to the same kind of same Middle East uh, tensions. You see, as I was analyzing it over the weekend, I said to myself, wait a minute, as, as I can recall going back not years but decades, when the Israelis respond to something that happens to them, especially when it's under the under the guise of annihilation, there is usually an immediate response. They were caught off guard, and there's going to be a whole bunch of, of issues involved in that not recognizing what was going on when there was internal strife in, in Israel uh, due to the prime minister's action, etc. But at the same time, um, what we're looking at in terms of that immediate response that didn't occur, it says that now um, the world spotlight is going to go from uh, they've got to avenge what happened to now it's a humanitarian crisis. And of course, it's in a humanitarian crisis. So I look at this, I'm, I'm talking about this purely in relationship to gold. I've got, this, has got, this has got nothing to do with politics or anything. It has to do with my uh, internalization of things that have happened, what usually happened, and what hasn't happened. And when you use up time in any conflict, then the whole aspect of, um, of, the, of, of another way of looking at it creeps in. In other words, if they had done whatever response it was uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of last week, then they would have just said, OK, well, that's done now. Now let's just deal with what we've got. Now they aren't in that position at all. So gold is responding to that. And what gold is saying to me right now, the fact that gold itself is holding uh, minus 10, it's been like minus 10 for hours now. It's, it's in a holding pattern, very much like what's going on with the conflict. And if there is some kind of resolution that doesn't involve a lot more killing, and I'm just being as blunt as I can, I would say to you that gold will probably start to pull back because the whole thing about gold is it has this, this kind of a humanitarian side to this whole thing. And that's what I'm looking at. So I don't know if I'm overthinking, underthinking, wrong thinking, clear thinking, but that's that's in the forefront of my mind because I've been looking at gold and we, for my subscribers to the opening call, we have a gold stock. Um, it's actually holding up, even though we bought it on Friday, and I said, this is crazy, but we have no choice. We, it's the best 
of this particular sector. It's a South African gold stock. Uh, let's see how it go and it, we've got a fairly tight stop. And so far, the stop hasn't been hit. We've even taken a little bit off in terms of taking as I like to do. So I'm trying to put it into perspective. Let me show you something else. If you look at silver, silver is also holding really well after an absolute spectacular peak A, leg B right now we're looking at. You've got your Chapman inside track resistance zone coming up, which will be in the 20, 2290 to 2310 area. It's trading right now 2382. If you look at, I want you to look at, um, I have to put crude oil into the picture because they all kind of go together. Crude oil is pulling back a dollar at, at 86. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take just a moment because there, there are a couple of other aspects in the gold that I want to look at. I want to look at the XAU and a lot of those those um, peripherals are going to be quite important right now. So if you, if you hold on, I'll get to it as soon as we return. Is that okay? Oh, Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, and we're all back. And what we're looking at is uh, Earl had asked me about the GLD, and I said I can't just do the GLD. I have to look, I kind of have to look peripherally around. And I'm looking at the XAU. This is a single leg, A to the upside. The XAU is the uh, Philadelphia gold and silver um, sector index. I've lost my notations. Uh, this should be A, B, C, D, E, F, slash, B. 
GCC and a D right there. Yeah, see, this is not a great looking chart. So if gold, if, if gold never had this big move last week, uh, it wouldn't have looked very good at all. So this is something that I'm rather intrigued. So I'm going to say to you, um, Earl, that going to the GLD, I believe it's in play. What I mean by in play is that it's come off off the, uh, the support level in the 160s. It's now at 177 right now. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the move that takes into the 180s to get above this resistance level, the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. But it's sitting on the 200, well, Friday it was sitting on the 200 period moving average when it gapped up, and that's still holding at 176. So do you have a position? Yeah. I'm uh, I'm along. I'm looking for for uh, how much to stay, how long to stay in. Okay, so the way I would do this is, I'd I'd have kind of a twofold plan with sub A and B in it, and basically, you, did you get in long before the big move up on Friday? Yeah. Okay, so then it's much easier for you. What I would do is this. I try to keep a core position and have a trading position. And the trading position says that if the GLD closes under the low of Friday, which is at 176.72, I, I'd monitor it with a fairly tight stop on just a small position. And the reason why I say that is because the move was spe spectacular to the upside. But I think it's in I, the, the way I'm looking at it right now, I don't see any reason why gold shouldn't be in play because this is a very complex issue right now and it's not going to be an easy solution. And there are going to be moments where it looks, I mean, humanitarian wise, it looks horrible. And then other times where it says, oh, maybe it's easing. And that's the way you're going to be looking at gold. The second thing I would do is this. If gold actually, if the GLD trades at any point, doesn't have to close, but it actually hits one. It's a 178.01 right now. If it touches 181, I'd say take a little bit off, just part of money management, because that inside track is going to, I suspect, is going to be a, a repellent zone first, and then a propellant zone, and it'll have to keep being tested. And then what I would suggest to you is that if the GLD is trading. Um, all the way through for this, the, all the way through Friday, the entire week, and hasn't closed. I'm going to give it a little bit of room, but it hasn't closed under the 50 period moving average of 176. Now, nah, that's a little close. Make it 175.50. You can expect some kind of a pullback, but the pullback has to very quickly go back to the 177 level. To me, that's really the issue because the amount of energy ex expended in that move in seven days is so big that you're now asking gold to um, remain up there even if there isn't that much tension. I'm talking about the same, this humanitarian side, um, and that's going to be a big deal for, for the gold. And if you look at stocks, this is going to, uh, we'll go to Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining had a, where did it go, NEM. Newmont Mining had a really big move. It's in a single leg A up. It's not giving anything up. And that just says to me that the gold, the gold miners, not all of them, but the gold miners, um, more so, let's, say, let's go to HMY. This is a South African Harmony Gold. Yeah, that's a fantastic move to the upside. Giving back, it's unchanged today at $4.86. So I'm saying to you, I think you're in the right position. We're just talking about how how you would trade around it, and that's really what I'm talking about. So your core position, I wouldn't touch that, but I would have like trading positions where I'd add back on the GLD if it does pull back uh, underneath the 200 period of, of 176.73. Maybe that's where I, I'd add back a little bit, and I'd trade around it. But you've got your core position. I think the next three days are going to be really important because if the GLD – Starts to close under 174. Um, 74. No, I'd have to say under 173. It could say that um, the upside is going to be a lot more limited at the moment. But that's the way I'm looking at it. I think it's in play. I think you've done the right thing. 
Uh, we've still got, as I say, we've got a gold stock that we got in uh, on Friday. It's doing very nicely today. I'm a little surprised, but it is. So I think you have to trade it as if gold is in play, and it'll be in play as long as there's this tension, and this tension looks like it should last quite a bit longer. So I hope that helps you. Yes, Basil, I want to thank you. As always, your analysis, you're the best. And I oh, thank, thank you, you, sir. Well, thank you very much, Earl. I appreciate that. Uh, all right. Well, folks, uh, thank you, Earl. We're looking at the Dow holding really well at 344. Unfortunately, I can't put in my notations. I hope to resolve it. I better resolve it today. Otherwise, it's going to be a big issue for me. Um, and uh, what we're looking at here in terms of the E-mini, look at the 9. The 9 crossed positive again. It, it was up, and then it pulled back. And at, not, at uh, 10, 10 this morning at 43.81, it turned green with a nine period moving average. It's still green. And I think this is just a, a kind of a relief to say, phew, we survived the weekend without uh, you know, tremendous you know, fatalities, et cetera. Like, you know, just this is the way, this is the response. And yet at the same time, gold is still holding very well. So we're not out of the woods. But the market, this, I'm cheating this, and I can't complain because although we have a, a short position in the Dow from August 1st, high, we have a trading position, uh, a, a long term, uh, sorry, a three times long trading position in the in the in the and the Dow and we have it in the QQQ. And we have other things. We have a financial stock which seems to be doing let's look at Bank of America. I think they come out with earnings the next day. Oh, I didn't want to do that on that chart. Let's go to this chart right here. So Bank of America trading at this particular point. B A C uh, yeah, BAC is up 25 cents at 27.03. I still think it's not a great chart, but if, if for those of you who went to want to tiptoe in last week, I think it's holding. It didn't sneak underneath that gap, um, gap high of the, was that Wednesday or so of last week? Um, and 26.57 is the low. Friday's low was 26.52, just a tad under it. And it's holding okay. I I don't know what the response is going to be in Bank of America because J.P. Morgan, uh, there were parts of it that were not very good, and yet it had a spectacular, uh, I'm not sure if it was the outlook, whatever it was, had a spectacular gap up session that went all the way to 152 and a half, what was it, 153.11. And then it closed at almost the low of the session. And today, trying to rally again, it's up 45 cents at 148.47 and hit 149.52. And it's pulling back a little bit. I'll be back in a moment. We'll talk about this. And then I've got the questions, all the questions in the den. We'll get to and the questions that came in by the email. That's it. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights Firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, so um, folks, we're back and we're looking at the Dow P34. Now, this is going to be important. You see the way a crude oil has rallied and it is trading at 86.91, down 79 cents. It did hit, it is a continuous contract. It hit 88.33. But you see this, these two doji candles, this is what looks like a plus sign with long legs in this case. Um, PD in the weekly chart it did pretty much what we were looking for in terms of this particular pattern to that high, the high back in, uh, I think it was October, November of last year, of 92.81. And we went right to it. We went just above. We went to 95.03. And now we're pulling back. Look, the 9 period moving average is above the 14. It's holding really well. And that just says the weekly chart is given, even though it's a peak D, and peak D is where other things can happen in the Chapman wave, it says it's holding really well because this is part of the conflict, this is conflict uh, trading uh, around the world. You know, crude oil is part of that. So I'm watching this very closely and I'm putting this together and I'm saying crude oil is holding well so far. It should have been, it was acting so poorly last week, it should have gone down quite sharply. It didn't. Um, we did the same thing with gold. We look at the USD JPY. This is the yen. This is the uh, currency pair, dollar, Japanese yen. The rule of thumb in these rectangle formations, they make a lopsided U, is that the price, if it makes higher highs and higher lows and walks the line period moving average, should go to at least a leg C or even a D, just under, right on, or just above the previous high in this case. It is the high of October of last year of 151.94. And the last high was about a week and a half ago. Uh, that was on the 3rd of October one night at 150.16. Mm. So it's a little bit under it, but it's on its way higher. And that just says to me that the whole idea of the dollar and gold having this uh, – mirror image relationship is not in it's not in play right now you've got the dollar as the currency of import king dollar tom always likes to say king dollar and that's what it is and you've got gold and gold is reflecting the tremendous uncertainty geopolitically so think of gold as the geopolitical king and the dollar is the currency king so in the meantime what we are looking at is <clears throat> the tlt the TLT is pulling back. That means yields. In other words, the TBT, which is the, uh, the this is the mirror image, the ultra short Lehman 20 or T1 ETF, is bouncing. So that's yields. If you look at the 10 year TNX, look at this. Strong. Hasn't taken out the left side high, but it's holding very nicely. So within that, that um, aspect, 
you, you don't have the yields coming down so that it really helps the market. And that means that the XLF, uh, I have to watch this very closely. A nice session today so far, 47 cent, uh, 40 cents at 33.61. You've got Bank of America, you had Wells Fargo. Let's see what Wells Fargo did on Friday and today. Yeah, big balance, leg C. Leg C in the uh, daily chart, getting to the 200 period moving average of 42.37. Wow, without this configuration out there, we, there's a chance that we would have seen something a little different this week without uh, that week Friday session. And as it is with the market routing, it's saying, you know, we're kind of looking away for the moment, but that can ch change on a dime. So here come the questions. Question was, could I look at Meta, M-E-T-A, Meta Platforms Inc., Internet Resource Info, formerly Facebook, uh, trading up. Uh, four, four and a half dollars at 319.24. It made a peak at three, just on the 330 level. It was 330.54 on the 12th of October, three days ago. Holding quite nicely. Weekly chart looking good. All of these are looking good. And I think the question is, where would where would I add if I'm long? In this environment, I, I would have a tough time saying to you without without at least taking into consideration that there are a lot of things that could go wrong. So I would say to you, if you want to add to the position, if you've got your core position, I... Okay, this is the way I would look at it. I know that you are prepared to do tra quick trades with a chance that the quick trade could become a more intermediate term trade. I don't... At 319.30, all I can say is if you want to add to your position, I would treat it as a split and I would add that position right now. And I wouldn't add the second position until there was a lot more uh, gain in the uh, in matter. So that's what I'm saying to you right now. I personally, I would hold off right at this moment, even though the chart is really looking very good. But you have the potential for a double top in the weekly chart, even though the nine is very strong still. So it just says to me, the risk reward, I, I don't. With the risk reward, I can just say a quick trade, yes, but not as a position play. Uh, that was a question. The next one was Meta. Could I look at Tesla? Yep, we've got our Tesla players right here. Tesla uh, at that peak C, and I said, you know, I'm. I've seen a number of stocks do this: go to a C or a D on the left side back in September, then pull back and then have another gain, but give back more after this gain than I would have liked to say that it's a continuation upside pattern. So Tesla says to me, I would not, I think I said that last week that I'd be, I'd be holding off on adding anything to Tesla. I do like it. I do think it's, uh, Neo is the one that keeps coming up. And Neo is uh, the Chinese electric car vehicle. Why isn't this, instead of being at 8.45, uh, if it's like Tesla at all, it should be up in the uh, 55 area, not at $8.46. And if you're looking at, what was the other one I was asked about? Uh, Rivian. Uh, Rivian, Rivian. Right here, Rivian. A nice candle today, but it doesn't look very good. I, I just be careful of these things. Um, Tesla's the one that uh, I'd stick with Tesla. Uh, another question came in is, uh, oh, I saw this down. I always look at this because it's like almost the same as my granddaughter's name. This is Veru, uh, V-E-R-U. Hers is a little different spelling with a different uh, implication there. It's got a nice move up today, and I can't remember what they do. But I've always checked on it because whenever it goes by in the tick house, ah, 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 I recognize it. So this is uh, stopped at the 50 period moving average. I, I'll have to check on what they, it looks like an EV company almost. It's just gone flat and hasn't been doing very much. Um, all I can say is that on the daily chart, it's very close to the nine period moving average turning up. But it is, it's got a lot of resistance. It's at 0.91 right now. And it's a pink sheet stock because it's got four digits after the the point nine one, it's at nine one zero zero. It's up point oh six, and the high of the twenty first of September was uh, ninety ninety eight ninety eight point zero zero, um, and the high today so far is ninety four point ninety three. I think that's where it's trying to go. It's basically stuck in a range. So I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure what the question was. 
Um, unit cost will plunge as volume. Oh, Rivian vehicles sell for over eight something. Um, unit cost will plunge as volume ramps next year. Yeah, so Rivian is a different thing. You remember when Tesla started up and I was saying, hey, each car must cost them about a quarter of a million and then it came down, down. Now they do, I mean, everywhere. I couldn't believe it. Yesterday I, I stopped counting. Must have been nine, nine uh, uh, Teslas and I was in the space of a you know, couple of miles. Unbelievable. They're so popular around here. I'll be back in a moment and Dow's at 371. Nice. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, we're back for the final segment, and I'm just hoping that I resolve my problem with the uh, notation in the Chapman Wave by being able to get those letters in Trade Station to stick and not fade. Uh, I need that. I've done it. I've done I, I, easy a million charts, I'm sure, over the uh, years and years and years, decades that I've been notating the charts. Uh, so, and Trade Station was supercharged and became Trade Station. They've always been real good and see if they're able to resolve this particular problem. So let's just do this, make it as simple as possible. We see the VIX index, and this is all really, okay, this, is, this has to do with news that's there, the geopolitical economic news out there. So the VIX is down at 1763. And uh, I'd seen my webinar, and I'm anticipating when the, when the low for this particular down phase is over and you get a really good buy signal the way that I normally look at it is that the VIX should be up in the 2832 area. We're not even close. 
So maybe there's still more to go. But in the meantime, we are trying to ride this up move as much as we can for subscribers from opening call. Our long positions so far are doing very nicely. But um, I, I, I've got a leash on these things. So the VIX index is at any point in the next three days, if there is a spike into the 21s and the Dow is down triple digits, S&P is down 60 or 80 points, I think then we start another phase, a very weak phase. But in the meantime, this is really important and I'm not going to uh, try to dismiss it. I like it. I'm looking at it. So here we go. The assets go to the S&P. Most people will follow the S&P. I'll just say if the S&P... After 2 p.m. this uh, after 2 p.m. today, it's up 50 right now at 43.77. If it's able to push at any point into leg C, gray leg C, uh, that might even start to turn into a buy signal, go into a buy signal, and that would have to be over 43.85.85. And then I'd have to say, I don't normally say, but in this case, it also has to close really strong, at least up uh, 47 points. That'll be a good sign for tomorrow. But the